and 17 on this Friday morning, February the 13th. Terry McAdams from Mac Tech Solutions joins us every Friday about this time to talk about some things tech related and um, whatever's in the news tech related and whatever's going on tech related. He'll, he'll tell us about it. If you've got questions, you can call us. You can ask Terry your questions right here live on the Rise and Shine show this morning, 940 763 1290, 763 1290. Good morning, Terry. Good morning. Um, what happens when you die in the virtual world, on the online world? Right. When you, like when you literally pass from this world, what happens to whatever you got going on in that thing over there? Yeah. So Facebook uh, in the past has said, well, at first they didn't have a policy. And then they said, well, we're just going to memorialize anything. As Once they learn that someone's passed away, they... They memorialize your Facebook page, and people still can access it, but it doesn't get changed. It's a static thing. and so, um, But families have been saying, wait a minute, hold on. We, we think we should be able to do something with this, and whether it's take it down or uh, you know, uh, add something to it or be able to download it and you know, those kinds of things. Well, they have come up with a way to work with families now and um, allow you to designate as the user before you pass away, you designate who can get your stuff. And so apparently it's like a, a will for Facebook, I guess. <laughs> so, you can, so you can appoint someone to take control of the account once it's been. Now, how does Facebook verify that you are deceased? Do you have to send them a copy of a death certificate? How does that, because I mean, you know, if you just, I can see the, the potential for some fraud here if they don't verify that, that the owner of the account is, in fact, gone. But. I think that I, I it doesn't go into the details here. I haven't dug in that deep yet, but I imagine it would involve so the death certificate. I mean, proof. yeah, I'm sure it's just like a lot of other things. I mean, uh, you you got to take over bank accounts and other things for other the, the things that we deal with now. So you basically, I, I think you should, uh, as part of, your planning, you should go ahead and talk to a lawyer about this too, because this is a new area because th this is something that people don't think about anymore. I've had customers come in, uh, saying that they had a family member die and they had their phone and, and wanted to get into the, underneath the passcode. And I'm like, Ooh, you know, some of this, we can't, we just can't do it. Um, there might be some legal ramifications as well, but, um, you know, but we have done it uh, in in some cases uh, for mom and dad for their child or something like that. But um, sometimes we can't get it just because the technical part of it. I guess in in a way, Facebook is some kind of intellectual property, if that's a, a, the right kind of term to apply to it. It is property. It is yours. You do to I mean, Facebook to some degree owns your content, but. To some degree, you own the content. It is property just as anything else as if, you know, say a, a manuscript to a book you're working on before you pass away. It, that's your intellectual property. Uh, someone's got to be given permission to do something with it, whether it's dispose of it, hold on to it, whatever. You, you, so, I mean, this makes perfect sense. What I don't understand is how in the world has Facebook existed for as long as it has and not had a policy like that? Well, I, it just hasn't floated to the top. Um, people haven't complained enough until now. And But it also specifies that you can only select one person. You can't have a backup, which is, I don't know, hopefully they'll improve on this. Yeah, and, I and I didn't find anything on there worth saving. Well, it... I roll so fast. I mean, if you, you've gone two or three days, you'll never find a message someone put on there. But if you if you look at it though, if you look at someone who's been on for a while, it is a it's a documentary in a way of your life. It is it's oh, become yeah. a big yeah, deal. I've, I've seen people say I'm, I'm eating supper right now. I mean, right, but there's cares? other things. But there's more than that. I, I I tend to not. I mean, we we post like, hey, we're eating somewhere or whatever, and we might take a picture of the food, and, and people believe it or not enjoy that. And enjoy doing it, have, and they and, don't have much to do, do they? Well, well, you know, um, but that doesn't, make, doesn't take much to entertain a simple minded person. Well, <laughs> well, anyway, they there's certainly um, that's an issue now because we're not talking about uh, just Facebook, we're talking about Yahoo email. Yahoo says, screw you, 
we're not going to give you anything. So you, you've got to designate ahead of time, give somebody else your password uh, to that. Really? Oh, yeah, because th- if you tell Yahoo the moment they learn, they're locking the account. You're not getting in. Yes. How would they? How would uh, well, it, sometimes people will slip. contact to say, hey, can I get uh, into the account? And they go, oh, why would you need to get into that account? Oh, because my family member has passed away. Well, they don't have, they, that's their policy is they don't have a policy. They just lock it. See, now I can see where that could be a really serious problem if you're like a lot of folks and you pay the majority of your bills online now notifications, receipts of payment, things like that will generally go to an email account that you designate mm-hmm. for that company. If you get locked out of that account, you know, say you're, you know, you die and your spouse can't get into the account, then all of a sudden they can't verify anything that you've done. Or, I mean, I can see where that could create a whole new basket of problems for somebody just in that respect. Oh, sure. And, and, um, Normally, of course, I don't think it's going to be a problem for those accounts. Like USAA is a huge online uh, presence or has a presence there because customers pretty much, there is no local location for USAA. Everything's done through the computer and everything. So uh, obviously they have ways to go through and verify all that. Um, but, but there are other services. I mean, this is, this is a big deal. I mean, the, the people don't think about it. But this becomes a big deal the more we do rely on that. So I think I see a business model for somebody who could uh, take a clearinghouse maybe, a subscription to a clearinghouse that then somehow each of these other services no, uh, subscribes to that, and there's this single place you can go say, hey, here you go. Who's These are the people I want to be able to take over this account, blah, 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 go down the list. Basically, again, a will. Uh, and, would, and obviously that clearinghouse would have to store your passwords, Secu- security information they'd have to be able to you'd have to well, share very um, some probably some pretty personal information i don't know that it would have to have your passwords because i think the capability would be such that there would be security certificates exchanged that would basically verify in fact that is someone who's authorized and you wouldn't need the because there's so many passwords no it, it would basically just give permission to those companies to release that information to who you designated so I think there's ways to do that. That does make good sense. It really does. Well, Terry McAdams, Mac Tech Solutions is here in Parker Square. They're lo- located between Ganache and Holders Jewelers here in Parker Square. And uh, you're open six days a week, Monday through Saturday. You're an authorized iPhone repair center now. You don't sell the iPhone, but you can work on them. And, of course, you've got all of the Apple products, the MacBooks, the MacBook Pros, iPads, and all of the accessories and ancillary stuff that goes with that. Uh, right there available in your store. So tell people how to get in touch with you. Well, we are, um, of course, available over the phone, 767-6227, mactech-solutions.com, and you can search us on Facebook, as everybody, well, most people are on. Uh, So we can help you there if you want to contact us. But I I think we like the phone, and, of course, you come by and visit. (laughs) That's the the way we much prefer everybody to come by. Welcome to drop in anytime during regular business hours. When the store is closed, please stay out. But anyway, it's 726 in the morning. Focus on, focus on agriculture from the Texas Farm Bureau. Your news and weather from KUZ. Your news word of the day coming up also and the rush update, which so many of you look forward to right here on News Talk 1290 and NewsTalk1290.com. And, of course, on your mobile device with the Radio Pup mobile app.